I've done several videos recently on gear cutting, focusing on methods such as gear hobbing, which use some fairly specialised equipment and cutters. But what if you only want to cut the occasional gear, or even just one, and can't justify the time or expense spent building a hobbing attachment? Even a set of regular gear cutters can be expensive, and will only cut one gear size. Well, there is a way you can cut any size of gear with any number of teeth, even any pressure angle you like, and all you need is just a cheap slitting saw, and a milling machine, and some way to accurately index a gear blank. A slitting saw is a circular saw blade usually made from high speed steel and very accurately ground to a certain thickness. They come in numerous sizes and are often used for cutting deep narrow slots which couldn't be done with an end mill. Now this is not the fastest way to make a gear, it's not suitable for mass production, but it does have its advantages. It's very good for cutting large teeth bigger than you could normally cut on a machine using conventional methods. My milling machine is 2 horsepower with a geared head. It has quite a lot of torque at low speed. The biggest gears I've made using gear hobbing have been 2.5 mod. And that's really about the limit. I want to cut some gears that are 4 mod, quite a bit bigger. For comparison, here is a typical lathe change wheel. Its teeth are 1.5 mod, that's about 16 dp. And here is a 4 mod gear. As you might expect, the teeth are over twice as big. But more than that, the area of metal that needs to be removed between each tooth is over 7 times as much. And since the gear is also thicker in proportion, the volume of metal that needs to be removed is about 25 times as much. It would be quicker just to saw this chunk out. And whilst we can't cut around corners or curves with a slitting saw, we can approximate them with successive cuts. This is the blank I prepared for a 12 tooth 4 mod gear. It's 56 millimeters in diameter. I've chosen a 2 millimeter slitting saw to cut this with. The thinner the blade, the quicker it will cut as less metal needs to be removed. But if it's too thin, it can flex and the cuts may be off. If it's too thick, it won't reach into the root of the tooth. A thickness of around half the module size works well. You might start by making a radial cut in the center of each tooth down to the root circle, but these would just be cut away by the next two cuts. However, they do serve as a useful visual reference, so I'm going to draw them on with a marker. I've also drawn on here the root circle and the pitch circle. The calculations for cutting the teeth will be based on the pitch circle. For this gear, it's 24 millimeters radius. I'm starting with the saw centered vertically with the blank. I touch off the saw on the side and move in the thickness of the paper then set my axes to zero at this point. A DRO is helpful here, but you can also do it with dials. I also have the rotary table set to zero to start. The first two cuts are going to be made at the pressure angle of the gear, in this case 20 degrees. I could tilt the head of the milling machine to do this, but I don't need to. I can just rotate the gear instead making all the cuts horizontal. This is far easier and more accurate than tilting the head. But since I haven't taken any cuts yet, 
I don't actually need to rotate the blank to take the first cut. I can just leave the table at zero, which will make indexing each tooth easier as I won't have to add in a 20 degree offset. All I need to do is reposition the saw to take the first cut, and I can do that with trigonometry. The sine of 20 degrees multiplied by the radius of the pitch circle is 8.21 millimeters. This is the height I need to raise the saw vertically. I also need to add half the thickness of the saw, in this case one millimeter, so that the bottom edge cuts on the flank of the tooth. Now I need to calculate how far to feed in the saw horizontally to reach the root circle. This can be done with Pythagoras' theorem. The radius of the blank is 28 millimeters. The radius of the base circle is the radius of the pitch circle minus the dedendum, 19 millimeters. Now I can calculate this distance. and subtracting it from the radius of the blank gives the distance to feed in the saw, 10.86 millimeters. If you think that seems like a lot of maths, don't worry, I've put it all in a spreadsheet that works everything out from a few basic values, like the number and size of teeth. You can download this for free. More on that later. Okay, so to take the first cut, I raise the saw 9.21 millimeters and feed it in 10.86 millimeters. Now I can repeat this cut for every tooth by rotating the blank 30 degrees each time. Now to cut the other side of each tooth at the same angle, all I need to do is lower the saw the same distance below the center line. However, this cut would not be in the right place. 20 plus 20 equals 40. Each tooth is spaced 30 degrees apart. And since I want to cut the other side, that's another half a space, which adds up to 45. So to start, I must rotate the blank backwards by 5 degrees. I can now cut the other side of each tooth as before, rotating it 30 degrees each time. After just two cuts per tooth, I now have something that resembles a cartoon gear. If this gear had more than about 130 teeth, these two cuts would be all that is required. But as this gear only has 12 teeth, the profile is more rounded and more cuts will be needed to reproduce the shape.
To make the next series of cuts, I'm going to rotate the gear half a tooth anti-clockwise from the original starting position. I'm also going to move the saw in a straight line half a tooth space at an angle of 20 degrees from the vertical. What I'm actually doing here is mimicking the action of a gear hob, taking multiple successive cuts with a straight edge to produce a curved profile. I can also take any cut along this line at a spacing of one tooth. Again, to cut the other side of the teeth, I just lower the saw an equal amount below the center line and rotate the gear to the correct starting position. Then take cuts at 30 degree intervals. I repeat this process again, this time starting at seven and a half degrees, or one quarter of a tooth space. I could carry on this process of splitting angles indefinitely, but for the rest of the cuts, I'm going to stick to the same three sets of starting angles and take the extra cuts mentioned before, moving the saw one tooth space at a 20 degree angle. This cut might look out of place, but it's actually starting to form the root of the tooth. It's looking quite close now, but the root of the tooth is still ragged due to the saw having sharp square edges. This part of the gear won't actually make contact with other meshing gear teeth. But it looks unsightly, and the square corners could concentrate forces leading to failure. So I'm cleaning this up with a small ball nosed end mill. Getting back to that spreadsheet I mentioned earlier. I wrote this to help myself keep track of the different cuts. All I need to enter is the module size, the number of teeth, 
the pressure angle of the gear, 20 degrees is standard, and the width of the saw I'm using. The dimensions of the gear are calculated automatically, and the cuts are generated. Displayed here is the height to set the z-axis, and the distance to feed in the saw. Note that not all of these cuts will actually intersect with the blank. The first three pairs of cuts you saw me make are the first ones in each column. In this order. If you're cutting a gear with more than about 40 teeth, these are probably all the cuts you'll need to make. But for smaller gears, after that you'll need to pick and choose cuts from lower down each column. I next made this pair of cuts, then this pair. A total of five cuts each side of each tooth before cleaning up the bottom with an end mill. You can download this spreadsheet for free from my Patreon page. No sign up is required. Check the video description below.